sales. It's what we talk about on this podcast. And it's one of those activities that if you find yourself terrified about the concept of going out there, speaking to strangers, taking the phone, calling people and asking them to buy a product or service, sending out direct messages to people that maybe some of your followers and you're thinking, oh my God, am I just going to harass these people? Am I going to bother these people? Do I need to become like one of those salespeople that are just in my inbox all the time, sending me messages for things I don't want? And all of those feelings come up whenever you find yourself needing to do sales. This is going to be a message for you. You're not alone, first off. I mean, I went through an entire journey of documenting why there's so many people that have so many blocks when it comes to sales. And what we need to remember is the fact that sales will need to happen in any business for it to even survive, let alone thrive, is going to need to have sales coming in. We need to acquire clients. We need to offer existing clients opportunities to buy again. And if you find yourself having to build this business and the sales activity is on your plate, you dread it, you fear it, I'm hoping that I'm going to share you a couple ways to think about sales differently that could open you up to the possibility that you might even like sales. I'm not going to get you to love sales just yet, but just liking it might make it a little less intimidating to do. One of the reasons we would have major sales blocks is because if you think of sales, and every time I do workshops and I ask the question, salespeople are, there's a series of words that always come up. Salespeople are manipulative slimy, awful, liars. These are all negative associations that we would have with the term of sales. And when you look at sales versus any other profession, you don't have as many filters that exist to certify that whatever professional that you're going to be dealing with in the field of sales is going to be actually acting and behaving like a professional. If you're dealing with a doctor, I'm not saying all doctors are amazing, But I would say that there's a large filtering process to ensure that somebody who does become a doctor has a certain level of professionalism and training before they're actually allowed to practice uh, healthcare. The same could be said around accounting, where there's a certain test that need to be passed and a standard that gets to be upheld whenever it is dealing with an accountant. So that level of professionalism does exist. In sales, it's very easy for somebody to get into sales. And so the chances of us having a negative encounter with a salesperson that is more likely than probably many other professions. And let's be honest, we're talking about another part of us that usually has massive charges, which is dealing with the exchange of money. Money itself is something that comes with so much emotion, so much baggage. And if you have a negative sales experience, you're talking about a possible loss or waste of money. We remember that. We hold on to that. We even share those stories with our friends. And you're probably on the receiving end of stories from friends who have been taken advantage of from a salesperson that was not acting in full integrity. Well, if those memories are in place, and this is what we associate with sales, of course, if you're asked to do sales, blocks would come up because you don't want to be like one of those people. Well, let's take it a step further because on top of that, the media really loves to portray salespeople in a certain way. If you've ever watched a show like The Wolf of Wall Street or Wall Street or Mad Men, you start thinking about how sales needs to be you putting on a shirt and tie, putting on a suit, going out, being a slick talking person that knows exactly what to say, sound cool, get people to take action. But at the same time, you're you're even seeing it being a sort of manipulation. You're seeing it as being evil. And if I take Wolf of Wall Street, you're talking about people running a scam and we glamorize this aspect of sales, that confident person that just gets big people to make some big decisions on money because they have a script, they're talking fast. Well, not only are they doing things that are lacking in integrity, which makes you say, well, I don't want to be a salesperson if it means I'm supposed to lie, cheat people into giving me their money. But you're also set with this expectation that you have to be this amazing talker who knows exactly how to sound like someone reading a script in Hollywood. And let's make a funny comparison here is if you're watching Hollywood movies about sales and looking at that as a reference to how to do great sales in the real life will be the exact same as watching pornography and assuming that these are great ways to make love. And so with that contrast in play, 
understand that what you're seeing as portrayed salespeople is not a representation of what is a great salesperson. I've had the chance to interview hundreds of people in various fields of sales and business leadership, which one of their main activities will be sales. And I see this repeating pattern within the education of what does it take to be a great salesperson? And Warning, if you've always labeled sales negatively, these might come as a surprise to you. The advice I always hear is, listen more than talk. You have two ears, one mouth. So if you listen very carefully to the needs of your client, you will be more successful in sales. Never lie. Always communicate with integrity. And when you don't know something, let them know that you don't know, but you will go find the answer. And that will make you a much more trusted salesperson. Be professional. Make sure that what you prepare and what you present has been organized and polished so that you are showing up as a professional, not as an unprepared person. And when I hear these kinds of advice, be caring for your clients, invest in your clients in the sense of understanding them better. Make sure your product is the right fit. Sell only when you see that the value the client is going to get is more than what you ask them to pay. And demonstrate the deal, find a way to meet them at their end, structure a deal in a way that makes it so they can take action to solve their problems. I'm hearing this repeatedly from great salespeople. And that message isn't coming across to the regular person who might have to do sales, but is blocked by doing so because the advice you've received and the things that you've seen do not match the reality of how amazing salespeople do it. So where are all these amazing salespeople if you've never had a chance to encounter one? Well, quite frankly, once you really move up in sales and if you're specialized in sales, a lot of times you'll be doing business to business transactions. And so if you're only interacting with salespeople on the consumer level, the chances of dealing with less professional people is actually increased. But not only that, when you have an amazing sales experience, think about it. Try to remember a great purchasing experience. More than likely, you are not labeling it as sales. More than likely, you'll just be like, oh, that was a great process. The person was such a great customer service person. Perhaps you went into an Apple store and they were just a really fun interactive place where you went to purchase a product. I know I've had my experiences buying Apple products and every single time I'm so impressed by their level of salesmanship that doesn't feel like selling. Have you ever caught these words coming out of your own mouth saying, hey, I just love it when I don't get sold to? Well, nobody does. But sales is actually an art of communication, a way of actually speaking a language that is necessary for people to understand the value of what you want to provide to them. So when you understand the person and you speak the right language, this is a beautiful way of selling that does not feel like selling. It actually shows that you're attentive, you understand, and you make recommendations. I remember walking into an Apple store and the person told me not to buy a product because when I told them what I needed, they said, I'm pretty sure what you have is good enough already. But lo and behold, I will end up being a long-term buyer of those products because I always enjoy the experience of the sales process that will not force a product down my throat, but rather will listen to my needs and make the proper recommendation. And last I check, Apple was doing fine financially. Okay, so with this information, what can you do about this if you are someone who is afraid of sales? Well, use this definition that I describe in my book about sales that could help you understand how sales can be different. Sales is nothing more than an energy exchange between conscious beings. And if you know what you offer is so much more than what you ask in return, then selling becomes an expression of love. I say energy exchange because products and services take energy to create and money is nothing more than stored energy. And if you are seeing the fact that what you've created, this creation that you're trying to exchange for money is going to solve real problems, then the least you can do is speak a language that is necessary for people to understand what you have and have it presented in the right way for people to make a decision to realize that you are here in their service and you're trying to make sure that for the money that they're paying, they're going to get so much more value in return. And now when you approach sales, it's not about manipulation. If you're learning about sales processes from the right sources, it's not about being slimy. It's actually about empathy. It's about you caring enough to speak a language so that people make greater decisions for themselves. And I would make sure that whatever product you are offering is, of course, more valuable than what you ask in return. So you get to love the difference you make. You get to love the clients you serve and love the product you sell. And every single process of selling from there is an act of love. So with that, if you have a to-do list today and you've always put aside the sales part, the prospecting, the reaching out, the following up, 
I would ask you to look at that list again, but with a different lens and suggest that maybe when you look at that, these are all opportunities for people that might be sitting there with existing problems in their life that you get to solve for them. And you're just going to make an attempt to reach out and say, hey, I'm here to help. Here's what I got. And you'll see that if you continue doing this long enough, you will be able to do sales successfully in a way that matches your values and have clients that are excited to buy from you because you actually care. And so if you are afraid of sales, well, maybe you can't fall in love with sales right away. But if you remove all of the baggage from all the things that we've been exposed to in sales and adopt this mindset that great salespeople have, you could actually be a great salesperson and you don't need to be that extroverted type of person. Matter of fact, most introverts are better salespeople and you might have a salesperson that lives within yourself as well. And you might be really good at it if you just realize that the way that you do it is good enough. Thank you so much for listening to the Selling with Love podcast. We have some previous episodes you can tune into right here. And if you prefer the short form content where you get to the point in under 10 minutes, we do have a ton of clips from our best episodes that are being shared on this channel as well. So pick which one supports you the most. And of course, thank you for liking, subscribing, and of course, selling with love.